Okay, so this is a quick tutorial on leveraging 123D Make in our architectural process. So I'm going to start uh, in 123D Make looking at something that we might be using for inspiration like a dinosaur. So let's just go uh, right into 123D Make. I'm going to use the Import tab. I'm going to grab my Stegosaurus and we'll load this file in. So this isn't a great model. Uh, it's pretty cool, but it's it's not really high polygon. It's not modeled perfectly, but it's it's good enough for for our intent. So you can see, first of all, it's actually coming in a little bit off axis. Uh, looks like it was modeled in something with the Y or Z axis up. So I'm going to use the rotate button to place it on the ground plane. And the next thing I want to do is look at the overall size that I want this to be. Let's say I want this to be about a 12 inch long model from head to tail. So now it's going to be my largest dimension right here. Just change that to 12. It's going to scale everything up accordingly. It always keeps everything locked in in terms of proportions. And going through that panel. Now the next thing I'm going to go to is the manufacturing settings. This is simply how big um, and what kind of device and what kind of medium I'm using for output. So I'm going to click on the sprockets. So my goal for this is a laser cutter, which is uh, 24 inches by, well, it's actually, it's 18 inches. Let's do 18, enter, by 24. There we go. And I'm primarily looking at using chipboard, not cardboard, for this. So I know chipboard is about 1 32nd of an inch thick, so it's 0 0.031 on the thickness of the material, 0 0.031. And now I'm ready to start diving into some different techniques for this 3D model. So the first technique to look at is something we're simply used to in architecture, doing contour models, something like that, and that's the stacked slices method. So the program is going to process really quickly and give us all of these stacks for the entire model. And looks pretty cool, but you know, let's just be honest, I'm looking at this page right here. That is something that not in a million years do I want to spend the time in the model, uh, unless I'm just really into making this thing incredible. Now if I was going to do this out of cardboard, let's go back to the manufacturing settings again. Let's say it's 8th inch thick corrugated cardboard. So it's 0.125 for the thickness, 0.125. It's going to update this for me automatically. That's a little more feasible. I could imagine doing that, something out of a corrugated cardboard. But let's say for right now I want to go ahead and stick with chipboard as my primary modeling. So let's go ahead and go to my thickness, 0.031. And rather than stacked slices, let's go ahead and go with a different option. So you can see I've got interlocking slices, curved radial slices, folded panels, and 3D slices. The folded panels and 3D slices I've never had too much success with. It's sort of using origami type techniques. Usually the models that I have are more complicated than what's going to work with those. But interlocked slicing uh, works absolutely fantastic. So you can see as a starting point I don't have quite enough slices. I've got a lot of parts that are floating in air. And for the most part for me if I'm working on something a few floating parts that are going to get included in the model don't bother me that much. Um, I'm not really looking for perfection. I'm looking for something that's going to give me an idea of the massing of the thing. So let's just go ahead and up, uh, increase the number of my cross sections to let's do 20 by 20. And you can see already I've got much more definition in terms of how this is coming along. The next thing you'll notice is there's a few things here and there that I would like to have some help with. So you can see these backlinks are actually going to work pretty well. I've got plenty of material there crossing, but these front legs have got a lot of stuff floating. So let's go ahead and make some adjustments to this. I'm going to select this first piece right here. So I just clicked on it once, and I can just kind of drag those pieces along a little bit. Do that with the next piece, and pull it forward. The next piece, 
gonna slide it forward. And then this is the piece that I'm really kind of after right here. I moved all of those forward just so I could slide this forward enough to get all of those legs sort of bridged and working. And I'm just sort of averaging things out now. And I could go to a specific view if I'd like just to be able to see that. So now I've got that looking a little bit better. I could do a few additional things, but you know, this is coming together pretty well exactly like I want to. You know, I'm not going to get all the pieces of the tail, all the spikes on the tail. I only have sort of an indicator of how these spikes are going to work on the top on the Stegosaurus, but that's actually for something very, very quick, exactly what I want. So the next thing that I'm going to do, I could also modify the slice direction. That's just going to change the angle of how things are cutting, but I'm actually pretty happy with that. I've got some modify some form tools, some really basic things, but I'm you know more interested in what I've got right here. So one of the first things to look at um, that you want to make sure you keep in your saved file, because these things do have a very specific intent in terms of ease of putting them together. And so this is the assembly steps. And this lets me simply toggle right through what the software thinks is going to be the best method of putting this together. Typically I would suggest using some type of quick set glue, uh, either you know a quick set or typically what I do is I just sort of uh, am fairly clever with how I hide the the hot glue joints to get things put together really quickly to make this object. So you can see that's how it's going to start coming together just like that. So the next thing that I need to go to um, and realize this is going to be saved as part of my file. The next thing I want to go to is my sheet layout. So I'm going to click get plans. So this is all coming together on one sheet 18 by 24. These red pieces are denoting that I am going to have some errors in the cutting in terms of the assembly. I have some floating pieces here and there. But again, I'm, I'm pretty much okay with that. So the type of file that I would love to have is a DXF file, and that would send something directly into Revit, which is what we use hooked to our universal laser. But we'll just go ahead and walk you through the process of showing what happens when we do export a DXF file. So just run that. So this is just temporarily to my desktop. And we'll open up Revit. Level 1 floor plan. I'll just put this over to the side. So I'm going to go to Architecture. Or actually I'm going to go to Insert, Import CAD. Desktop. Let's look for our DXF files and say open. And so this is going to place this guy pretty much perfectly ready to go. Uh, if I change my scale one to one, you can see everything's in. Looks great until I go to a 3D view. And then you can see the DXF files actually really quite mangled. Um, in AutoCAD, there is some flat routines, some things like that that you could do with this. Um, but there's a little bit of an easier method unless you're really familiar with AutoCAD. So we're going to go actually push this through Illustrator as a typical technique. So back into Make. It is not the file that we wanted. We're going to go to an EPS file, which is Illustrator, and I'm going to export this again. And then in Illustrator, Adobe Illustrator, I'm going to go ahead and open that file. And now the first thing I need to do, the default page size is 8.5 by 11. So I'm going to click Document Setup. And I'm going to edit my artboard. I'm just going to stretch this out so that it meets edge to edge with my 18 inch by 24 inch board here. So I'm just grabbing those, grabbing these little grips right here, pulling them with my left mouse to get them all the way out edge to edge. So with that done, 
I just double clicked the hand by the way to zoom out. I'm just going to use Illustrator as my sort of go between here. So I'm going to go ahead and go export. And we'll just send this out as an AutoCAD DWG file. Steg 1, AutoCAD DWG. Save and OK. Now, once in Revit, back to level 1 floor plan. Import CAD. Let's make sure I grab the DWG file this time. You can see I've got that object now ready to go. So the next thing, and I want to make sure that that is scaled correctly. It actually came in a bit too large, but we can fix that whenever we do our page setup. So the next thing we want to look at is if I have a massing model coming together in Revit, something like this right here, one of the next things that I can begin to do is also use 123D Make to do a very quick massing model of this object. So to bring this into Make, I would be going to Add-ins, STL Exporter, and I'm just going to stick with a standard binary file and click Save. I'm just going to call this test. Inside of Make, I'm going to go ahead and save this file. Save to my computer. And let's start a brand new file. So I'm going to import my object. And I'm going to run it through the exact same routine again. So the first thing I'm going to do is set my manufacturing sizes, 24 by 18, with a thickness of 0 0.031. And so my first option would be stacked slices. So you can begin to see that I've got something that's going to work fairly well, but the size of this is very, very small. So I'd want to look in Revit and understand what my output scale is going to be you know, if I want this to be a, a 1 to 20 study model or something like that. So let's just go ahead and increase, not the height, let's set the height at about 6 inches. So now I've got 330 parts with no sheets. Let's change the method really quick to an interlocked system. I'm not sure why it was giving me any sheets, probably something with numbers and types, but I'm again, I'm not really interested in stacking 330 pieces together, uh, although that could work quite nicely for a topography model or something like that. But using this method gives you uh, kind of an opportunity to see your project and your massing in a slightly different way, which is pretty appealing to me. Um, the idea of beginning to see how these pieces come together and begin to express the massing in more of a buildable structural bay kind of system that's still getting you the basic forms and basic shapes but presenting it in a different kind of way and again the the, the output for this would be the exact same process in terms of right now rather than using the DXF file I'd be sending it essentially through Illustrator and then then into Revit and then on to the laser cutter